Some men aren't looking for anything logical, like money. They can't be bought, bullied, reasoned, or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. So, Microsoft added chat reporting. Wonderful. Who could have possibly seen this coming? Oh, right. Everyone who saw the initial buyout with Microsoft buying all of Mojang. The writing was on the wall from the get-go. We all knew this was only a matter of time. Microsoft is all about control. It's all about power. It's all about money. And you know what? There's nothing necessarily wrong with power and money, save for the fact that humans, of course, misuse that power and that money, especially when they believe they are the good guys pursuing a good goal. And in this case, the good goal or the good intention that will lead us straight to the bowels of hell, in this case, is think of the children. Oh, think of the children, guys. We can't have profanity. We can't have... Uh, discussion of any topic more sensitive than how cute the panda bear is you can, it's one thing to want to be polite it's one thing to want to be respectful and those are valuable traits that everyone should seek to uphold absolutely that's that's just common virtue or well i shouldn't say common but it is virtue but though of course the way it's implemented is not in the pursuit of that virtue it's in the pursuit of Orwellian control of the player base, which is, in Minecraft's case, is tens if not hundreds of millions of people. The population of a pretty large country plays Minecraft on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. And Microsoft, of course, wants more power over that. So how do you get that? Well, you restrict the speech of those doing it. If someone has a server, and does things their own way. They say speech that is outside the whimsy and fancy of the Microsoft Corporation. Well, that's too bad. You're banned. Your server is banned if you step out of line. They like to act that, oh no, we're just getting rid of the bad apples, the meanie trolls and the griefers. But we all know that's not how this actually works. Sure, they'll get some of those people, but it's never been about that. Plenty of servers since the beginning of Minecraft have dealt with those people and if they cared enough to ban them, they banned them because surprise surprise decentralization especially in terms of internet infrastructure works. Server owners ban people that they don't want on their server because it is their property and they get to decide and they don't have a monopoly on Minecraft servers. If someone says something naughty and gets banned for it, well, they can either A, go to a server that likes or condones saying naughty things, or B, they can make their own server, either hosted within their own home or hosted via a hosting service that allows those naughty things, and then it's good. And you know, no skin off anybody's nose. Everyone plays on the server they want. Everyone has their own governance, for lack of a better term, and it works. But with this new move, Microsoft has completely gotten rid of that. We all know this. And in the coming weeks, months, years, they will crack down harder and harder and harder until the only servers that are allowed to be online and the only players that are allowed to be online are those that Microsoft gives the okay for. Unless there is enough pushback to make them back off, they will keep pushing because they have no incentive not to. The only thing they will listen to is their bottom line. So how do you affect Microsoft's bottom line? Simple. You stop playing the game. You stop buying their stuff. Their whole goal might actually be to get the more adult members of the Minecraft Java uh, player base to leave, specifically so that it can be uh, childrenized, to put it bluntly, so that it's all children all the time, because children 
being inexperienced people of the world, they do not know, they do not understand necessarily the scams and the microtransactions and the social engineering that Microsoft commits against them. And so they use all their mind coins and they give Microsoft a bunch of money for things that they could get for free because they don't know any better. And it shifts from when I was a 10 year old, I downloaded Mass for Free, I downloaded Mods for Free, I learned how to make my own Minecraft server when I was not even pubescent. But now, kids nowadays will have the Minecraft shop. That's what they have on Bedrock, and you know that's what they're pushing for in Java Edition. That's the truth, that's the reality of the situation. Alright, so how do you stop it? How do you prevent it? Well, as I've already said, you stop playing. It doesn't matter if it's part of their dirty scheme to have it so there's only children left. The fact of the matter is, if tens of millions of players stop playing their game, it's gonna hurt their bottom line. It's going to hurt their popularity. It's going to hurt the attention that they get. But then, well, I still want to play a block game. I still want to play Minecraft. I don't want to leave Minecraft. Well, there are a few options for that. There's a few options, all right? And I'll go over some of those options. Option one, you play modded Minecraft. You play third-party software or cracked Minecraft pirated versions that are free, don't give Microsoft a damn penny, and you can still enjoy Minecraft simple as. Or, you could play another block game. Minecraft has been around so long and has pioneered the genre of open world survival crafting block games. And there's some good ones and there's some really bad ones. Alright, I'm going to list some of the good ones because everyone's played a bad Minecraft clone. So let's talk about some good ones, alright? My favorite, my favorite is Vintage Story. Vintage Story is a game made by a fella named Tyrion. It's been in development for six years. He has a whole development studio behind it. I believe it's uh, Studio Ahago or something like that. And it is a very good game. It has actually better world generation than Minecraft. It, its main focus is on realism and not to the point of being unfun, like uh, some may have some of the hardcore Minecraft mods, but it focuses on going through ages of human technological development from say, uh, the stone caveman days, stone age and all that jazz, all the way up to steel, uh, steel production. And there's plenty of other mods within Vintage Story that allow you to go even further. In fact, that's the main benefit of Vintage Story. They have a modding API, which Minecraft still doesn't have, even after years of broken promises. They have a modding API, Vintage Story does, and it works wonderfully. It basically works like a Gmod server. You go to a multiplayer server, they have a bunch of mods installed. They say, okay, we have this many mods installed. Uh, would you like to install them? Yes or no? And if you say yes, you download them, you join after a few minutes, and you're good to go. And if you say no, well, then you don't have to play that server. You can play another one. And I gotta admit, the system works. It's fast. It's intuitive. Uh, the mods are free. The game is not free. The game is... 21 dollars 18 euros but there's a 30-day refund fee uh, 30 day refund period so anytime within those 30 days if you decide okay I don't actually want to keep playing this game then you can refund it to the team and they will give you your money back uh, which is very generous refund policy and very good ethically on their part and that's that's mainly what they're about if you go on their website you'll see the first thing they have right below their very cool trailer is a list of no's you know no pay to win uh, no microtransactions etc etc that's what they're about they're about giving power and control back to the player base which is being taken away more and more by Microsoft so that's my recommendation if you don't want to go to all the hassle of pirating Minecraft or just playing modded servers or things like that and you're worried that no matter how much pushback there is, Microsoft is just going to keep pushing and make things worse, your best solution as a player and as a consumer is to not give them a single penny, 
and to not even play the block game and generate attention for it, and instead go play an entirely different block game, which is inspired by Minecraft and improves upon the formula. So, if I were you, and this is what I've done, I would go play Vintage Story, give it a try, uh, get your money back if you don't like it, and let's just keep playing and having fun and give the fat finger to Microsoft because their tyranny is not how life should work. You should have power over your property and over your own speech. End of story.